All right, hello guys. So we are getting started on chapter three today. This is a continuation of unit two. Um, so just carrying on kind of from where we are were with chapter two, looking at some trig stuff, but we're just gonna get in some additional information on trig in this chapter. So a quick review from um, Math 10C here <coughs> of some of the things you'll need to remember um, as we move forward. So the first thing always is to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. So if you're using um, like a Texas Instruments calculator, then basically no matter which version you're using, you're just wanna go gonna wanna hit mode here right next to the second function button. And then you want to scroll down and you can see here you have the option of radian or degree. So you just wanna scroll to the right, make sure degree is highlighted and then hit enter. And then, so now if you were to go down, degree would be highlighted. Okay, and so then you can quit out of there. So second function mode to quit, and now you're back. So everything should be set up properly for you. Okay. Um, the other things to remember are what you might know as SOGATOA. So we have three trig functions that we use to solve for sides and angles in right angle triangles. Um, so basically sine of angle A is going to be equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. Um, so these are some of our trig functions. Now, if you're looking for an angle, you're always going to have to use the inverse of sine to solve for the actual angle, right? So basically when we do the inverse of sine, it's kind of like an algebraic way of isolating just the angle. So the, so the algebraic is the inverse of sine, essentially. And so we do sine minus one of the opposite over the hypotenuse is going to be equal to the exact angle. Okay, so if you want to punch in sine, like the inverse of sine, just remember you'll just have to do second function and then sine, because you can see there's like a sine minus one. And the same is true for all the other functions. Okay, um, now one other thing to remember is Pythagorean theorem. So remember that um, basically you can solve for any side of a triangle by saying a squared plus b squared, oops, Let's look at a little typo there because you're not adding all three together. You probably already know what you need to do there. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, not plus C squared. Okay. Um, and just keep in mind that C always has to be the hypotenuse. So if you're solving for a side that's not the hypotenuse, you have to algebraically rearrange this equation. Lots of students make the mistake of um, like trying to add C with another one to solve for A, for example, and you can't do that, right? Because algebraically, if you're solving for A, you would have to have C squared minus B squared to be equal to A squared, okay? So a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, basically, your steps when you're using these trig functions are that you need to find the reference angle. So whichever angle you're working with, um, you are going to have to use that angle to determine which side you're thinking of, right? Because depending on where the angle is in the triangle, it could be a different set of sides. And then once you know your reference angle, then you're going to want to label your opposite, your adjacent, and your hypotenuse. And then once you know what those are, then you can determine which um, trig ratio will be ap appropriate to use. So let's try looking at some examples that will basically go through this. So in this one, we're looking for this angle here, theta. Um, I think on the ones that I posted, it should have it already filled in, but I printed these out before I had a chance to notice that that wasn't in there. Um, so we have angle theta, and we're given two different sides. So like I just mentioned, we're finding our reference angle, which is right here. And now we want to label the sides. So remember, if whatever angle you're looking at, the side that's straight across from it is always the opposite side. Then, um, because these functions are used for right angle triangles, so remember the right angle is this one that looks like, um, like an L, right? So it's 90 degrees. So the, the side that connects the angle you're looking at with the 90 degree angle is your adjacent side. And then the side that's opposite from your 90 degree angle is always your hypotenuse, or C if you're using um, Pythagoras. OK, 
Okay, so we've labeled our different um, sides. Now we need to figure out which um, trig function is going to be the best one to use. So remember, the easy way to remember those trig functions is so ka toa. And all that means is sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so if we look at this one, if we want to solve for this, we want to use the known values. And we know adjacent and we know hypotenuse. So out of these three options, the only one that has adjacent and hypotenuse is this one here, right? So that means we're going to be using cosine of theta, which is the angle that we're looking at, is going to be equal to the adjacent side, which is 12 centimeters divided by the hypotenuse, which is 32 centimeters. <clears throat> okay, now this is where, remember, anytime you're looking for the angle, because we just want to solve for theta, we don't want to know cosine theta, we have to use algebra to move this one away so that we'll be left with the angle. So when we do that, we do theta is equal to cosine minus 1 of 12 over 32. Okay, so in my calculator, all I would do is second function cosine, and it's going to automatically start up a bracket for you. We want to do 12 divided by 32, close the bracket, hit enter, and you get 67.97. So since we only have two numbers here, let's round that to 68 degrees. Okay. Um, the next one here, find the value of x to the nearest hundredth. So again, first thing, find your reference angle. So we're given this angle this time. That is still going to be our reference angle. So your reference angle can be either the unknown or a known value, but it has to be like an unknown you're looking for or a known value. Okay, so we have the 22 degrees here. Then we want to think about what sides we have. Well, we're looking for x, which is straight across from the angle that we are given. So that makes it the opposite side. And then right here is our 90 degree angle. And straight across from that is the other known value. So that makes it our hypotenuse. And so now again, we can think about so katoa, right? So katoa. So we have opposite and hypotenuse. So the one, the trig function that includes both of those is sine. So in this case, we're going to say sine of 22 degrees, because we're given the number value, is equal to our opposite, which is x, divided by our hypotenuse, which is 20. Okay. Now, again, we're going to have to use algebra to get this x on its own, the unknown. So because it's being divided by 20, we need to multiply 20 over to the other side. So now we're going to find that x is equal to sine 22 times by 20. Okay. So in this case, when you're putting it into your calculator, sine 22, uh, sine 22 degrees. Now you kind of have a couple of options. You can close off the bracket and then multiply by 20, or you can do um, sine 22. I usually just do this times by 20 because if I hit enter between the two, then I know for sure that I didn't make a um, like a mistake with the brackets. So you can see here that you do end up with the same number. However, if I put in sine 22 times by 20, I get this as my answer. Because what the calculator thinks is happening is that you want the sine of 22 times 20, right? Instead of the sine of 22, whatever value that is, times by 20. So you need to make sure that you are putting in proper order of operations here. So we end up with 7.49. So again, we've got two numbers here. So let's say x is equal to 7.5 and the units should be consistent. So we're going to do 7.5 meters. Okay. All right. Let's move on to another one here. Solve the following triangle. So whenever you are told to solve a triangle, it means that you need to find all the missing angles and sides. So as I've 
talked to you guys about in previous videos, um, the the filled in notes that I have posted on the website have all of this information written down on them. So you can always use those to fill in your notes a little more completely after the lesson. Um, okay, so in this one, we're not given any kind of an angle to work with. We're just told um, that we have side four and side seven and a half, right? Um, now, in the one that I gave you guys, I ended up filling this in. So you do know that this is a 90 degree angle, right? So let's think about our different sides. Um, we're going to just label the triangle to make it easier to work with. So let's do A, B, and C. Okay. And the reason why I did it like that is because when you're labeling a triangle, the angles are always done with capital letters, A, B, C. And um, the side opposite that angle is always given the the title of the lowercase version of that. So in order to follow with Pythagoras, where the hypotenuse is always C, I wanted to have angle C here. The side opposite it is going to be a little c. Okay, Here we have angle B, so angle is always capital. If I go straight across, I have this side, which is going to be little b. Okay, And then here I have capital A, so the side opposite that is going to be little a. Okay, And this will become really important when we start working with the sign law in the next um, lesson. Okay, so now we have some of our stuff together here. So we already have side A and side B. How can we most easily solve for side C? Well, we know that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So that's probably our easiest way to get started. So essentially C is going to be equal to the square root of A squared, which is 7.5 plus b squared, which is 4. Okay, so if we square those together and then we square root them, we should end up with c is equal to 8.5. Okay. Okay, so now we have a, all three sides. Now we need to know the other angles, right? Um, so that's basically going to be angle A and angle B. So let's start out by solving angle A. Okay, so when we're dealing with this one as our angle A, the side across from it is opposite, and the side connecting it with um, the 90 degree angle is adjacent. Now I'm not going to label angle C or side C here right now because basically what I want to do is work with the numbers that I was given initially because if you use the number that you calculated, first of all, if you were in a test situation and you calculated this wrong, then all of your other calculations are going to be wrong. So always try to do your calculations using the given numbers as much as possible. Of course, if you have to use this one, that's fine. But um, if you can, try to use the given numbers for all your calculations. And um, I think I had another reason I was going to say why I did that adjacent and opposite. Oh, and also usually the other thing too is now it's up to you. Like, I mean, you can always be labeling all sides, but for me, usually if I have an angle, I only label the sides that I'm going to be working with because otherwise I just have like extra information on the page that I don't really need to see. So for angle A, we have adjacent and opposite. So if I think about my Sokatoa, the only one that has adjacent and opposite is this one. So for angle A, it's going to be tan of A is equal to my opposite side, which is 7.5, divided by my adjacent side, which is 4. Okay, now again, I need to isolate just the angle. I don't want to have the tan in there. So for A, I'm going to say tan minus 1 of 7.5 over 4. And when I put that in my calculator, so again, you're going to go uh, second function, 10, and it's 7.5 divided by 4. Close the bracket, enter, and I end up with 61.9. So let's just round that off to 62 degrees. Okay. Now for angle uh, B, this is going to be pretty easy, right? Because we already have angle A. Um, you were given in yours. I had to draw it in on mine, but this is a 90 degree angle. So what's the easiest way to solve for angle B? Well, we know that all the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So we can say B is equal to, 
and I'm running out of room here, but 180 minus 90 minus 62. Okay, um, and so if I do that, 180 minus 90 minus 62, I end up with B is equal to 28 degrees. Okay. So remember that you can use, like when you're solving a triangle, you can use multiple strategies. Like for this one, you could have still done um, a trig function if you wanted, or if you would have done it the opposite way of me and solved for this one first, you could have used 180 minus A. So just keep in mind, there's, there's more than one way to get these right. Um, okay, next one, solve for X and Y in the following diagram. So, um, let's see here. We want to solve for this side here and then this side here. So, a good way to think about these kind of questions is to be kind of strategic at first. So, because this diagram contains two triangles, you're going to want to solve for each one of them separately, right? So, if we were looking to solve for uh, side Y here, the only information we have is two angles, which doesn't really help us a lot with our trig ratios um, or with Pythagoras or much of anything, right? Whereas with this triangle that has side X that we need to solve for, it has an angle and a side, so we know that then we can use um, our trig ratios to solve for the last side. Once we have this side, we can use that together with this angle to solve for the last side. Okay, so always kind of a good idea to look strategically first, like where are you, where do you have the most information? So if we want to solve for X, um, we need to start labeling. So with this triangle, our reference angle is here and the side that we know is the side that connects that angle with the 90 degree angle, which makes it the adjacent side. And the side we're looking for is the side that's opposite the 90 degree angle. So that's going to be our hypotenuse. Okay. So for adjacent and hypotenuse, we have to use, if we look back up here, cosine is adjacent and hypotenuse. Okay. So we're going to do cosine of 40 degrees is equal to adjacent 6.4 over our hypotenuse, which is X. So this is a little bit of a trickier setup than ones we've looked at so far, because basically what you have to do when you have an unknown variable on the bottom of your um, fraction, then you need to multiply it across, right? So we're going to have X times by cosine 40 is equal to 6.4, but now our X still isn't isolated, so now we need to divide out the cosine 40 and bring it over to the other side, right? So it's always a two-step process when you have the unknown on the bottom. So it's going to be 6.4 divided by cosine 40. Okay, and that's going to give us X being equal to 8.4 meters. Now, just to quickly show you guys in the calculator to make sure that you're doing proper. So 6.4 divided by, now you would want to start a bracket to put in the cosine 40. Oops, bracket, cosine 40, close bracket, close bracket again, because you're closing the bracket for the, like the 40 that's inside here and for the cosine, and you get 8.35, okay? Let's see if I do 6.4 divided by cosine 40. See, so without the brackets, oh, never mind, it's because I did, <laughs> didn't put in cos. Let's see, 6.4 divided by cosine 40. Oh, it does work. Hmm. Well, you never know. <laughs> I prefer to just be safe and make sure that I use my brackets. Um, but if you were comfortable with your calculator and you know for sure that it always works, but I would make sure that you test it out before you write a test because I have seen calculators where it doesn't work without the brackets, but maybe because this is a newer version. I don't know. Um, okay, so we solved for X. So now this is one of those cases where we're going to have to use our calculated value to solve for Y. Okay, so now that we're looking over in this triangle, we need to find a new reference angle, which is our 68 degrees. The side that connects that with the 90 degree angle is the adjacent, which is what we're looking for. And then the only other side we know is the hypotenuse, um, or sorry, not the hypotenuse, 
this was the hypotenuse for the previous one. In this case, it's going to be, um, let's see, adjacent. Uh, it's going to be opposite because it's straight across from this angle. Okay, so now we have adjacent and opposite, and remember that that was our tan function. Okay, so we can say tan of 68 degrees is going to be equal to our opposite side, which was the one we calculated previously, the 8.4. Now make sure you don't use this rounded value in your calculations. You should always use the full value that you calculated. So it's going to be the 8.35, something like that, divided by um, the adjacent, which is our unknown, so that's our y. So we would basically have to go through the same set of steps again, y times by tan 68 is equal to the 8.35, and then we need to divide that out. So y is equal to 8.35 divided by tan 68. Okay, so again, now what you would want to do is make sure you use the number you calculated, 8.35, and then divided by tan 68. So bracket tan 68, bracket, bracket. So I get 3.37 or 3.4. So y equals 3.4, and were we given units? Oh yeah, meters. Okay, so there's our final answer for that one. So just make sure you're always using the full decimal, otherwise you might not get the right answer for like a numerical response type question, which would not be great if you only didn't get the right answer just because you didn't, like just because you rounded too early. So you should always only round in your final answer. Okay, let's try some word problems really quickly. So a ladder leans against a wall, making a 35 degree angle with the wall. So with word problems, you always want to try and visualize what's going on. And I find it's best to make a sketch so that you can kind of think about it. So we've got a wall and then um, a ladder is leaning up against it. So we know that ladders kind of lean at an angle. And um, then there's going to be the ground here, right? Ladder leans against a wall, making a 35 degree degree angle with the wall. So just be careful about where that is. So if here's the ladder and here's the wall, the angle with the wall right here, 35 degrees. Okay. Um, the bottom of the ladder is six and a half meters from the wall, <laughs> which seems kind of insane, but okay. So six and a half meters from the wall, right? Because here's the base of the wall and the base of the ladder. So the distance across there is six and a half. How long is the ladder to the nearest tenth of a meter? So we're looking for the length of the ladder. This is the ladder here, so that's going to be our unknown, right? So because we have an angle and a side, um, we're going to have to use trig. So let's assign our different sides. So straight across from the angle we know is going to be our opposite side. And then we can assume that the wall and the ground, of course, make a 90 degree angle. So straight across from the 90 is our hypotenuse. And so if we have opposite and hypotenuse, that's going to be sine, right? So it's going to be sine of 35 degrees is equal to my opposite side, 6.5, divided by my hypotenuse side, which was x. So again, I'm going to have to multiply this over. Now, if you guys kind of get, like for me personally, I would never write the full thing out every time of like x multiplied over and then moving it over. I just know if my unknown is here and my I have a number value here, I just switch them out. So as you get more comfortable, you can always start doing little things like that, but make sure you understand why it's happening so that if you are in a test and you forget like, oh shoot, did I switch this one or did I switch that one? You can still like logically figure out what the right way to do it would be. So six and a half divided by sine 35. Okay, and again, just be careful with how you punch it in. 6.5 divided by bracket sine 35. Although, right, I guess we figured out you don't have to be that careful, but um, okay, so let's round it off to 11.3, let's say. Now for, if you're concerned about like for tests, um, 
I'll usually tell you how many digits to round to. If I don't tell you, then just like actually this one says to the nearest tenth of a meter. So we keep one decimal. Um, if it doesn't tell you, just you know, give a reasonable answer. Like don't write out like 11.3324. You know, make it 11.3 or at the most 11.33. Okay. Um, and then, of course, for a written answer, usually you would want to write out like the ladder is 11.3 meters long, um, which I did in the notes that you can find online, but I'm not going to waste your time writing it out now. Um, okay, one more question. So this is a bit of a more complex type word problem. So Sylvie and Matthew are bird watching. They both spot a nest at the top of a tree. Matthew is 89. Now, the nice thing is they kind of draw the... the um, situation out for you. So Matthew is 89 meters from the tree. So here he is. Um, the angle between Sylvie's line of sight and Matthew is 73. So the angle, here's Sylvie, here's Matthew, the angle between them um, is 73. The angle of elevation from Sylvie to the top of the tree is 35. And we want to figure out what is the height of the nest. Okay, so the nest is at the very top of the tree. So we're looking for this spot up here, right? Um, if we're looking for the height of the nest, of course, what we're looking for in essence is the height of the tree. So this is the side we're looking for here. So how are we going to be able to solve for that? With these kind of questions, I find it's usually easiest to work backwards, kind of like the, the question that we saw before with two triangles. So if this is the side we're looking for, the only other information we have in this triangle is two angles, which doesn't really help us because with trig, we need a side and an angle. With Pythagoras, we need two sides and we don't have either one of those. So that's when you want to start looking at the second triangle and seeing if you can solve for a side of the joined triangles, um, because then you can move into that calculation. So if we look at this triangle from Matthew, we have an angle and we have a side, which is good, because with trig we can solve for one more side if we have those two components. Which side would we want to solve for? Well, obviously we want to solve for this this side here that connects these two triangles because then we'll have a side length for this big triangle, we'll have an angle, and we can solve for x. Okay, So it's a good idea to kind of work backwards in these types of problems. So the first thing we want to do is solve for Matthews. So in this one, let's start out by figuring out our angle is 73. What are the sides we have? Well, straight across from this angle is 89 meters, um, which is um, opposite from our reference angle. And then what else do we have? We want to solve for this long side, which is opposite from the 90 degrees. So that's going to be our hypotenuse in Matthew's triangle. Okay. Now, again, if we think Sokatoa, which one of those is going to work in this situation. If we have opposite and hypotenuse, we want to use sine. Okay, so we're going to say sine of 73 degrees is equal to our opposite side, 89 meters, over our hypotenuse. Okay, and so again, because our unknown is on the bottom, the algebra is going to be to multiply this across and then divide the sine 73 out. So we're going to have hypotenuse being equal to 89 meters over sine 73. And so then if we do the math on that, we end up with hypotenuse being equal to 93.066 something meters. Okay, now we don't have to use this, like this isn't an answer to our question, so we don't need to worry about rounding for that one. The next thing is we want to work with this triangle to solve for this side. So we need to develop a new frame of reference, which is going to be this angle here, 35 degrees. And then this is the side we just calculated, right, because it's shared between the two triangles. And this is the side we're looking for. So with reference to this angle, x is our opposite side. And 35 degrees is connected to 90 degrees by this side here, which makes it our adjacent for this triangle rather than our hypotenuse. So now we have opposite and adjacent, so we're going to be using tan. So tan of, let's see, 35 degrees is going to be equal to our opposite side, x, 
divided by our adjacent side, which we just calculated here. It's the 93.0666. Okay, so again, make sure you do not round that number off beforehand. So in order to solve for x, we're going to have to multiply this one away, which means we're going to have 93.066 times by 1035. which is going to be equal to um, x. And so we can say x is equal to, in this case, it would be 65.2. And the units that we had um, in our first side were meters. So that's going to be the same units that we'll use here. And so again, for a written one, you would say the nest is 65.2 meters high. Okay, so that's everything for kind of like an, a little bit of an introduction to um, the trig that we'll be looking at. So it's just a refresher on some of like the trig functions and working with right triangles. Next time we're going to look at the sine law, which uses kind of these trig functions, but in a little bit of a different way and for uh, triangles that do not have 90 degree angles. So I will see you in that lesson.